to his presence with Hello. his name. And welcome. You're watching Vision Plus. Without a vision, the people perish. We want you to have a vision for this wonderful day. Happens to be a little rain the day we're taping this. And you know what rain does? It makes the flowers bloom. I have five things today that I feel are important for you. If any of you happen to be on welfare or get assistance or if you know of someone or if you just like to have another person's opinion about what the solution for people being out of work. I'm talking about able-bodied people that want to work and could work and are physically able to work mentally and emotionally possibly also. Uh, wrote an article in the Valley News newspaper and if you saw it, it the headline read there's not an able-bodied person in the United States that I couldn't get a job for. And I believe that with the help of the Lord Jesus Christ, that is an accurate statement. I remember one time when my uh, children were little, my daughter asked if we could get on welfare. And I said, well, honey, no, we can't get on welfare. Why are you interested in getting on welfare? She said, well, she was having to babysit to earn the money to go to camp. And her friend in Sun School class didn't have to babysit, and she already knew that they were going to pay her way to camp. They were going to get her a towel and bathing suit and toothbrush and toothpaste. And she said, she, if, she could, if we could get on welfare also, she wouldn't have to do that, and she could get those things given to her. I said, well, hon, uh, it's just that her, well, I started to respond to that, and I said, I thought about it a little while and I said, Deanna, doesn't it make you feel really wonderful when you know that you have earned your way to go to camp? That there are some people who never have that wonderful feeling, that feeling of accomplishment to know that they've done that. There was another time when our son had the responsibility of mowing the lawn and when we were in Waco, Texas, we had about an acre lawn. It was a big responsibility. He also had a paper route and he had to do that. So one time he left the lawn. He did not uh, uh, mow for days and days and days and days. Well, days ran into the weeks and bunches like grapes as sometimes days have a tendency to do. And we didn't do anything, but he came to us one day and he said, Mom, I want to go to the lake this weekend. And we said, no going away for the weekend until the lawn is mowed. And so he started and it took him two days because now it was ankle to calf high and sometimes knee high to how the grass had grown. And so he worked and worked and he came back in the second day after he totally completed the lawn, had all the grass raked up because it had been so long, he couldn't just lay, leave it lay anymore. And he came in and I looked at him. He was standing there all exhausted, sweaty, this big old macho guy and uh, sweat running, running down. His t-shirt was glued to him. And he had this most wonderful expression on his face. And he was looking out at the lawn. We had a picture window there in Waco that uh, was over the lawn going out to a little creek that was in the back and he was looking and he I said Anthony what are you looking at he said I'm just looking at that lawn if I'd have known it felt this good to have the lawn mowed I would have mowed the lawn last week sometimes when you do a job and you do it well and you feel good about it then that is just so wonderful. And that's going to be part of what I want to tell you about that I feel the Lord has, has revealed to all of us that have studied His Word. And also, one time we had the experience of taking what we call goodie baskets out to a family at Christmas time that uh, we've been in the habit of taking food to different families. And we'd heard about this family, so we got it all ready. Took the food out there. When we got there, the dad was laying on like a little daybed sofa smoking and he got up and came and walked around and talked to us and they had a son home from the service who had been in the service he was no longer in the service there was a 16 year old boy and a 17 year old about that age boy and about 11 year old girl there 
and the mom came out from the kitchen and over in the corner were some uh, potato chip bags and empty pop bottles, soda pop, soft drink bottles and clothes drawn around the room and didn't have a really good uh, fragrance in the room like like all of our houses will get if it's not the cleaning's not kept up and so we gave them the things and uh, we went on we were going home and my three children were very quiet in the car and finally one of them said mom if we're taking Christmas baskets to them why is it that they can afford to buy uh, potato chips and cold drinks, soft drinks, and we can't. And I said, well, and said the boy, and then it started. All three of them just started like, just telling me a different one. They said, yeah, and the boys were about the age of the boys that were uh, doing, uh, sacking groceries at the Kroger store. And they went on and on telling about, and why isn't the daddy, the daddy looked like he didn't hurt or wasn't any more tired than our daddy, why wasn't he working? And on and on they were interrogating me. And I said, well, hon, some people just do not do not have the experience that they haven't worked and their parents haven't worked and the generation before haven't worked. And they don't know that marvelous feeling that comes from working. And so that's when I came up with these ideas that I believe I could put every person in the U.S. of A. or maybe other countries, but certainly here in the United States, if they wanted to work, they're able-bodied, they have their the faculties of being able to think somewhat. I'm not talking about a road scholar, but I am thinking that people who can get up and do some things. I know one day I was in there uh, at a place and we were plunking along in an old car and I know here at Victor Network, Chuck and Vicki, we've been agreeing with them about getting a new car, or a car, a certain car they'd like to have, that would be start every time and go and come back again. They could possibly make some of their trips in when they do need to go. But this person came into the welfare office. I had been calling on them about uh, Chamber of Commerce anyway, talking to them about some of the health issues. And this person came in and she got, she, honestly, she was beautiful to look, look at and she um, looked totally as healthy as I did to look at her, run in there, and she got her, her check or discussion about the check and she left. And I went out the door about the time she did it. She got in a beautiful red, new looking Camaro. I get in this old plunker Omni Dodge, which I'm happy to have, uh, have that at the time, and it doesn't make any difference. What we have is terrific to have something to drive and go back and forth, but I just felt sometime uh, like the day that when I asked the guy to help me put up a mailbox, and he said, well, how much will you give me? And I said, I looked at it, I had the post hole digger, I had the mailbox, I had all the tools it needed, and all he needed to do was dig a hole for me, and I said, Oh, what, $25? And so I put the, oh, I see that a person came in just now to be with me, and I wasn't sure whether he'd be here or not, so I started the program anyway. And his name is, uh, come on over and join me now. Hello, Don. Hello, Don Bonnie. Brown, just come on over and sit on the set with me. I'm telling the story about the day that uh, I wanted to have help with uh, uh, putting up a mailbox, and I'm talking about this particular thing I'm talking about, Don, is uh, welfare. I have an idea that I could put every able-bodied person to work in the whole U.S. of A. And so I'm, I'm challenging people to put me to the test. So uh, I have five things, and after I have finished these, then I want you to meet my friend Don Brown. That I wasn't sure, hadn't really heard and confirmed, but he's here, praise the Lord. Okay, number one of the things that I think that you can do is follow the Bible's law. If a man doesn't work, he cannot eat. And you'll see it in 2 Thessalonians 3, 9 through 13. And I'll just read a couple of verses there. It says, Neither did we eat any man's bread. It's talking about Paul and the fact that he actually 
had um, not been a burden to the people because he worked. I call it his tent making job and we all have to have tent making jobs occasionally. And it says, for even when we were with you, this we commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. He uh, had said that uh, neither did we eat any man's bread for nothing but wrought with labor and travail night and day that we may not be chargeable to any of you. So it's a principle from the Bible that we work. If we're an able-bodied person, I'm not talking about my 87-year-old mother and people like that. And secondly, I felt like that we could develop a work core similar to the Peace Corps or type of work corps, uh, the welfare recipi recipients could volunteer or be drafted. It would eliminate what I call the locked-in situations in areas where so many feel hopeless and helpless and they're, they don't have anything to do all day, many of them, and they could paint and fix up the cities, the highways, the libraries, roam the areas, recycling cans, pick them up the highway. It gave them a great feeling to drive by and say, hey, I painted this fence along here. I picked, I, made, I planted these flowers here and make them feel good. Third was pay only, uh, not pay for after the second child in a family. And fourth, to have a barter system, kind of like a blood bank. You know how a blood bank works is you can go and give blood and then someday when you need blood, it's there for you. And it's the same thing if you give so many quarts of blood, pints of blood, then that blood is for you. And this a barter system for the uh, would be that you put so many hours of work in, if you're on uh, welfare subsistence of some type, but an able-bodied person I'm talking about, then you would get so many hours when you're aged or in need, or someone you could designate could take your hours. This could all be computerized. I got it in my head and it written down. And this would help the aged with grocery buying, changing light bulbs, moving furniture, all kinds of things. And fifth, the mandatory t uh, attendance of uh, classes for uh, positive self-esteem, things that would uh, make them feel good. Find out the principles like we read, if you don't eat, you, if you don't work, you don't eat. And like I was telling you about Anthony's inner, inner glow when he finished mowing the lawn, you'd be living the Bible Ecclesiastes 3, 9 through 13 that primarily says, what profit has the worker from that in which he labors, that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. And I think that's possible to do that. Now, if you have any uh, thing you'd like to rebuttal back to me or add to this idea, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. And I'm so happy that my guest has arrived, Don Brown. Don, welcome to Victory Network TVN. Well, thank you very much, Don. And you've had a busy time this week, haven't you, going and doing a lot of things, Birmingham. And uh, tell me about, now, Don and I met a few years ago when we worked on, he was doing seminars and we were going to uh, Philadelphia and different places. Now you have two publications. The pick, uh, tell me about the Gunnersville Guide and the Spirit briefly. Uh. The Lake Gunnersville, Lake Gunnersville Marshall County Guide is one of the publications, and the other one is the Marshall County Spirit. Uh, the Marshall County Spirit that we're working on now is a uh, business newsletter that goes out to primarily to business people in Marshall County, uh, distributed to the uh, chamber members. It's our primary database that we use for uh, distribution or chamber members, but it's not exclusive to chamber members. It also goes out to uh, any business person that's uh, interested in becoming uh, being added to our mailing list. And so this is an idea that any community could use, isn't it? To get the, and tell me how it could work perhaps here in Huntsville or Decatur or Scottsboro or other places. Okay, well the initial idea was to uh, be able to work together in the community. Marshall County in itself is unique in that it has four cities the size of uh, the cities that it has, the average populations of the four cities, the four primary cities in Marshall County, Arab, Boaz, Albertville, and Gunnersville, are around 10,000 each. And these are not major cities in relation to a city the size of Huntsville, but as far as a county, it's unusual. There is no other county in the state of Alabama that has this situation where there are four cities. They're all different. Um, 
uh, in some ways, but then they all have things to offer uh, each other. Uh, there are many things in Marshall County that uh, uh, a lot of folks are not aware of. I've lived in Marshall County now for three years, and when I first started getting involved in this project, there were a lot of things that I even come across now that I didn't know uh, were available for people traveling through the area, uh, tourist attractions. Uh, of course, most people know about the state park, the lodge. Uh, there's a, a beautiful lodge at the, on the lake in Gunnersville, and uh, they have different events like just uh, in January they had Eagle Awareness where the folks came up to the, to the lodge. It's a place where eagles actually right. live and grow and have their babies and reproduce and it's a pl unique to right, very few places in the United States. That's right. It's, a, like it's it. a designated spot where uh, the, uh, they come. This group of people come each year at this time in January to, uh, to see the eagles come back in. Uh, we're also the swallows of Capistrano, <laughs> the, like the eagles of Gunnersville, <laughs> Marshall County. We also have the uh, uh, under construction now is the uh, uh, largest uh, World War One replica museum, airport museum that's under construction at the Gunnersville Airport. Um, Frank Ryder of Arab is uh, currently uh, underway with that project. We're going to have a big event coming up in September, uh, Aerodrome 92. There will be a World War I reenactment over the skies of Gunnersville. Um, People will be coming from all over the world, in fact, for that because they have English and yes. German replicas. Right, and, and they've had some of them that have even been shipped over from England mm -hmm. and rebuilt at mm -hmm. the airport there. Um, they anticipate over 100,000 people. Now you are you are about as unique as one of those airplanes. There's a lot of things in your life. You are a very strong, committed Christian. How did that come about, Don? Well, uh, actually, I'm a very young Christian in that respect. Uh, I haven't been a Christian all my life. Uh, I was saved in 1980, so uh, I'm 12 years old in that respect. And uh, I came to the Lord in a what I consider a unique way. I didn't have a church background. I wasn't. I raised to go to church and attend church. I did have a what a lot of people I've heard describe as a an experience early on at a at a revival that I went down and at that time thought that I had uh, made a commitment to the Lord, but I didn't re really understand what I was doing. I think I was about uh, 12 or 13 years old at that time. But nothing really came of that. I didn't stay in church, and uh, the Lord has worked in my life. Uh, there's been many things that um, I have been involved with that could have ruined my life completely. But I feel like the Lord has had His hand on me all through these things. And the illustration that I have shared with you is that uh, uh, about the open doors and closed doors, uh, many times in my life I feel like that the door has been closed and the Lord had no intention whatsoever for me to go through that door. But I break it down and go in anyway. And He comes in behind me and drags me out. Uh, well, you've had some experiences also with the Lord as far as some visions and things that have actually happened to you. Tell me about those, Don. Well, actually, my initial um, experience, the gentleman who witnessed to me, do um, you want that yes. whole story? Yeah. From uh, when I, uh, uh, I was working with a company in, uh, uh, that had moved me to Huntsville. And uh, they closed. Uh, they decided to, to file bankruptcy and cut back some of their operations. And uh, uh, upon their closing, I had to find other things to do. And so through um, my journeys and some other business ventures that I was trying to get, in, uh, get started, I was trying to recruit a certain individual. And uh, my intentions as I sought this person out was to recruit him for a, a multi-level business that I was involved in. And uh, so I sought this individual out and I asked him to go to lunch with me and with intentions of uh, spilling my uh, plan or spiel to him. And uh, in doing so, we went to a, to a restaurant to talk about it. And instead of the conversation getting to what I wanted to talk about, he started getting to the things that he wanted to talk about. And he asked me about my Christian experience and if I were a Christian, and uh, 
I told him, well, I, I wasn't really sure. I, I told him about my experience and, as a child, and but I really hadn't uh, stayed with that, and I wasn't in church. And So he began to talk to me about some things and uh, began to share some things to me that I'd never heard before that I thought were very unique. Uh, and he also would share things with me that um, I wondered if he had been uh, been watching me uh, because he knew some things that uh, uh, been only, only the Lord could know. Only the Lord could know these things. So as he began or continued to witness to me and talk to me about uh, about the Lord and about things, I I became aware of a uh, a presence that seemed to to take over this individual uh, that was speaking with me. And as I was looking in, into his eyes, it was like I was no longer looking at him as an individual. It was, I could still see eyes, but it was just like a brilliant light. And it was up higher, and I, it was like I was having to look up to speak, or to not really, I didn't have anything to say. I was just looking, uh, looking up at this uh, brilliant white light, much like these lights, <laughs> but much brighter. But it was like a that there was eyes looking back at me and I knew that I was looking into the eyes of the Lord and um, I, just, I didn't know what to do I didn't know how to react to that of course not being in church or knowing these things but I had no doubt as to uh, what this was and what was happening to me at this time and this lasted only for a short period of time and as um, this went away and I, I'm looking back into the eyes of this individual that's speaking to me and uh, he could tell that I had obviously saw something that was unusual by the expression on my face and I said you're not going to believe what I what I'm seeing or what I've just seen he says yeah you're you're talking to Jesus Jesus is speaking with you and uh, he continued then to talk to me and witness to me and at that table then I accepted the Lord and became a Christian through that experience and the uniqueness of that story is that this individual uh, I don't know where this individual is anymore he uh, there were several coincidences that came into play he had moved to Huntsville is you this the one yeah, is this the one that moved next to you and he uh, actually discipled you for hours and hours and hours on end at the apartment, wasn't it? Right. He, he ended up moving next door to you, and then he moved away. Right. Or, or he disappeared, he and his whole family. You never saw him again after you were decided. No, I haven't decided. seen him since In that the time. next couple of minutes, uh, well, we're just going to have to save those other times that you had an experience with Jesus for another time. Okay. But uh, Don, uh, just in the last couple of minutes, what do you feel was the reality of this person, this family? Uh, it has been suggested that uh, this was an angel the Lord sent specifically to witness to me, to minister to me. Uh, this individual had all a lot of similar traits and characteristics that I possessed, and uh, I could identify with him. He could identify with me, and it was like it would take this type of individual for me to listen to what he had to say and to be, and to be compelled to, to uh, follow what he was saying and I and like I say it has been suggested that uh, that it was an angel and, and we have um, the angels unaware that uh, have visited us and so it would certainly say Don Brown if all of you would like to hear more you just let me know uh, I'm Bonnie Libhart along with Don Brown he is the publisher well, are you considered the publisher of editor the editor of the Marshall County Marshall County Spirit, Spirit and the Lake, Lake Gunnersville Guide, Guide. Mm -hmm. and since we've been talking to you about how to get a job now about these items that we have uh, been talking to him about we still want you to know that if you are unable to get a job uh, we would let you I'd like you to let me know because I believe that there is a job available for every able-bodied person and so I want to talk more about that but more than that I want you to hear more from Don Brown so if you will stay tuned another week I believe you'll probably hear from him
I'm Bonnie Libhart along with Don Brown. Bless your heart for watching. Thanksgiving in your heart. Your voice is ringing. Your voice is ringing.